Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So, teapot decanters. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, I made that up. It's a thing, but it's not a thing. Nobody calls them that. I just made that up. But um, yeah, it's a shape of decanter. Let me show you. That's like a teapot. Yay. Pour your cup of tea. You know how it is. There's all sorts of variations, but yeah, so this is a fairly standard one. But I see it with the spout going like that and the handle like that. Yeah, that's to me, that's a teapot decanter. And um, you see, we'll put that down. Yeah, not too much noise. Anyway, so there's all sorts of ones where you've got claret jugs where the spout goes straight up, and then you've got ones where this where the whole decanter's at an angle and going like that and stuff like that. But these ones are the, the, it's like the decanter's at an angle, but it's got then it got a handle that's like a teapot. So. Um, there's lots of different ones. I have a few that I'm going to show you. But first, before I show you those, I'm going to have a rootle through um, the decanter, this book here, Ancient to Modern, uh, by Andy McConnell, and show you a few. And the answer is, he doesn't name them anything. Nothing at all. He just puts a date and says, there it is. So, but there are quite a few in here. Hmm. So they are a thing. It is a design choice that somebody's made. Um, they all seem to be 20th century. Um, it's an unusual choice. It's probably not the most ergonomic and I'll show you why. But um, anyway, with that said, let's go on. Let's have a look in the book and then we'll have a look at the glass. Okay. So yeah, the book is The Decanter, Ancient Modern by Andy McConnell. And this is the first one I'm gonna show you. It's a bit of a weird one uh, compared to all the others. Um, it's got these little legs. But anyway, I think that counts as one, kind of. Probably the least like a teapot of them all. Um, this is in the Czech glass section. The maker is Paul de Brady. And what he says about number four is 1950s. And that is it. Then on the next page, it doesn't name who the maker of this one is. But I've got this one here. And he says, this one's from the 1960s. Yeah. Actually, uh, while I'm here on this page, and uh, I'll cut and go to the other pages, but I'll show you something. Look at this one. So, yeah, it's like a teapot one, but with no handle. And I think there's one, if I go back another page. Yeah, look at that one. That one there. Another funny angle job. And there's a few makers of those, mainly Czech or French. But anyway... Um, let's go on to another page. So, a couple of pages over, we're in the French bit, and um, we've got this decanter here, number four, which is made by um, St. Louis Monsal Lorraine. And the date is given for this one is 1925. Now, I've got a couple of these to show you. Um, they're very nice quality things. Mine is slightly different design, but overall, it's pretty much the same. So um, let's move on and see some more. Here's another one in the um, Swedish section. This one's uh, Costa by Ellis Berg. What's the date? Number two, 1930. Yeah, very deco looking one, this one with a little, almost like a little wing on it. But it um, must be awkward to pick up uh, with that little funny handle. I wouldn't like to do that um, when it's full and with the stopper on because one slip and your stopper's gone. But anyway, um, yeah, another one, slight, again, real variation on the design. Here's a Danish one by Jacob Bang, by Home Guard. Yep, 1930. Now, I haven't seen the others. I have seen this one in real life. There was, when I went to um, Norway, if you go right back to my early videos, there was one of these, I think it was like about, 30 pounds or something like that, which I think is a bargain, but I was never going to get it home from Norway with that handle. Yeah, it, you know, you only get one one piece of luggage to take and yeah, that, I bought something else that was flat shaped in the end, but yeah, I, I was really, mm, wanted it, couldn't buy it, but this one's very teapot shaped. Um, so let's move on, another one. Here's a Dutch one by Leerdam uh, from 1930. And um, yeah, you're starting to ask yourself, 
who wasn't making teapot shaped decanters so again really different style and everything very different but still this 45 degree stopper and a pouring handle so keep going and here's another Czech one so this one's from 1960s yes 1960s got on it and um, yeah it's a bit like the French one that we were looking at earlier um, little handle very teapot like and yeah so that's all the ones in the book that I've got to show you um, and with that said let's get on and look at some glass so here we are we're starting with these really lovely French ones by St. Louis. Um, a lot of French glass looks stylish but isn't great quality. These are not that. These are really nice. It's cased glass. Can you see? So basically they've had a big clear glob of glass, blown it a bit, dipped it in some green blown it some more, finished it, the green went all the way out to the end, can you see it's around the edge of here, and then put the handle on in clear, yep, can you see that, and um, yeah, these are stopper, see what nice quality these things are, um, yeah, I love these. Um, look at the base, nicely cut as well, these are super super nice, um, St. Louis, 1920s and 30s, and yeah I have a, we're cutting on the handle as well, just to make it give you a steady hand, there's a red one, exactly the same, yeah. There are glasses, the glasses are like little tumblers um, with similar cutting like this. I haven't got any glasses. Um, and yeah, to make the set, I need a blue one. If anybody's got one, I am looking. Um, but anyway, yeah, these are really nice. So here is the next one now. I think this one is German. I've seen a very similar one on eBay with a label. And I'm blown if I can remember the name of the maker. Uh, but it was German. It's not quite as good a quality as the French ones. It's got polished top on the stopper. Yeah, but the bottom has not been polished. It's been basically blown into a mold. You can see the crease here uh, but that's been polished off there and then it's been fitted and it's fitted reasonably well and then you got the white handle it's quite stylish I think this is probably from the 50s I think I think it's a post-war thing they all seem to be in that 1920s through to the 1960s or 70s period all of them seem to fit into that 50 year slot but yeah this is quite nice I quite like it this is the first one I bought I just thought it's just so stylish with this blaze on it saying it's kind of it is a deco style but I think it my feeling is it's post-war but it is very deco in its look and feel and here is the last one I have quality wise this is a step down again. I think this is Czech. Um, one thing about this is that that does ha I've noticed that I've had nearly had an accident once with that. It literally just, if you go too far, yeah. And that's what I mean about not great ergonomics. If you lean too far over, if it's upright, even if you go from side to side, it's not like to fall out. With this, if you go to side to side, out it goes if you go that way too much. So, yeah, you can see the peg is not quite as nicely done as the other one. The top is not polished. Even the enameled ring is not as well done. 
you know, it's a bit off there, but hey, it's, they've obviously decided that is acceptable. Then, the enameling. Now, this is the thing. I do have glasses with them. I've left them in the shed. I'm not going to go and get them. They're little ones that go like this, like little cocktail glasses, but they're tiny. So, yeah, I think all of these are for hard spirits. If the French ones is probably Ricard or something like that. These are probably for a schnapps or something like that. Because um, the glasses that go with them tend to be small. Um, yeah, so the painting is all hand done. So I don't think a transfer outline was used at all for these. I think they were all hand painted. Um, the glasses all have little black cats on them. I think the sweep is supposed to be lucky in the glasses on the other side. Yeah, I think I got this off eBay and I think I bought the lot with six glasses for like 15 pounds. But the quality is absolutely terrible. Look at the quality there. That sticking down, just the whole base is not well done. The seam is very visible all the way over. The handle is very thin. All that they have painted it as well. And someone's managed to get a little black spot of enamel on it as well. Just there. So yeah, quality control, not genius, but can you imagine it with six glasses with little black cats on on your table looking really nice looking really cute um, yeah it's a really what's the word kitsch kitsch I think that's the word it's a very kitsch I think it's I think this is post-war as well it might not be might be pre but I think it's post-war and yeah it, it was just so cute and it i just it was on for, i think it was like 10 or 15 or something and i just thought right i'll just stick something on and if it's mine it's mine if someone wants it badly they can have it so and now it's mine so yeah those are the teapot decanters i've got to show you um i'm making this up remember it's not a real thing i've made it up so there you have it, something I just made up. And if you Google for teapot decanter, only one of these will appear and it actually belongs to me. I just I just did a little search before I started all of this. And yeah, the only one I was thinking, I wonder if anybody else is calling it this. And the only one that appeared is mine and I posted it on Collectors Weekly 11 years ago and it's that green one. Um, so yeah, it I've made it up. So just before you, kind of going, eh, it's not a thing. Well, yeah, it's not. <laughs> so anyway, I will leave the reference for the uh, book in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a bit of an odd one in that I made something up. Okay, you, no, I don't make things up. I try not to. Um, and um, yeah, so remember to like and subscribe. I will be making more videos. And I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you. Good night.